yeah, take it away, Ami. Firstly, thank you for the opportunity um, for letting me present here. So just a very basic introduction regarding Drupal Contrips. I've recently been uh, working with Drupal Contributions as a part of my um, sponsored by Salsa. So uh, earlier I, I used to I used to do some contributions, but like now that I'm doing it for Salsa and learning a lot of things from Christine and a lot of other team members. So I, I just thought maybe I'll sum up and I'll present some things that I've learned new and which may be helpful for everyone here. So it's it's not a very structured presentation, but hope this helps, guys. So let me start with defining what is a like issue workflow in uh, uh, Drupal.org. When we create an issue on Drupal, it it starts by uh, it starts with the active state. Then we work on it. We move it to needs work, needs review, and then finally reviewed and tested by the community. So this is the general um, workflow that we follow. So I'm going to stress on the reviewed and tested by the community RTBC step and how, how do we do that? How do we comment? And uh, what, what are the best practices? So I'm going to focus on RTBC step. Uh, there are a lot of other uh, statuses as well, closed, fixed, closed, duplicate. These are the ones which we generally see. and um, yeah, so the, this, this is the general workflow of the Drupal issue. I'm going to start this presentation with like, how do I find issue for work? So generally, I start with this URL. Uh, th there are multiple ways you can do that. Firstly, you can just use this project search window. What I generally do is I, I use any of the issue tags mostly no, or, or bug smash initiative. There are a lot of lot of issue tags which can be really helpful for finding like issues to work on. I also sorted by last updated so that uh, you get to work on uh, issues which are like uh, actively being worked. I also choose um, the needs work. Or if I want to review an issue, I, I choose uh, needs review here. One more thing that I wanted to show showcase to you guys was um, just a moment. There's an issue Kanban as well. So, so searching an issue with this tool, like on this uh, search issues uh, is, is sometimes very difficult. So a Kanban really helps here. So let me show an example. So you just need to have the issue keyword, like um, issue keyword and use this Kanban board and you will be able to see what are the active, um, what are the active uh, issues, what are the links work. So it's not loaded for me, but like it generally does. You can select the priority. You can also choose type of issue that you want to work on and choose an issue. This is how I generally search an issue. Uh, you can also join the Slack channel and there are a lot of channels. Uh, for example, announcement support, Drupal SEO, uh, needs tests, a lot of them. There, there is there, Most of these issue, uh, most of these channels have a uh, bi-weekly bi um, uh, like meetings so that you can attend and uh, you, you get to know what, what is being worked on and that, that really helps. Next up, I want to talk about some helpful tools. I'm not sure what, what you guys use for uh, general like development and uh, Drupal contribution, like which, which tools you use. Most of you must be generally using uh, a Drupal setup environment, but I use something called as a Drupal pod for review. I'm going to demo it, how, how exactly that works. You need to install an extension of Drupal pod on Chrome. And once you have it, you just visit any of the um, issue pages. 
and so if you want to try out this patch if you want to if you want to troubleshoot or try out this patch all you need to do is open this extension choose which patch you want or maybe which branch you want to use alongside so for example if i want this patch to work with 9.5 and whichever installation profile you want to troubleshoot it with and just open the dev environment this is this is going to build a environment for you and you you can also modify the code you can also troubleshoot the issue here um and and this is really helpful because you don't have to have all the uh, environments for example if you want to work on a issue on drupal 10 and suddenly you have to switch to 9.5 it takes a lot of time whereas over here uh, it instantly creates a, a environment for you and you also get access to the code so so let let's wait for uh, this environment to to get ready it should be up within like 30 to 40 minutes 40 seconds once you i'll i'll show okay yeah so we have this environment here you can either open it in whichever whichever uh, uh, whichever editors you use or maybe you can also open it in the browser i prefer you using it in the browser itself once i have uh, opened it in the browser a vs code um, repository opens for you this is where you can see all the code and the patch is applied um you can also use like um stand alone vs code and it will open the code for you it quickly runs through few steps and applies the patch that you're using in the meantime let me uh, show you the git pod yaml this this file uh, saves all the configuration for you okay and the extension you you can add extensions the next time you open this uh, vs code again next time you open uh, git pod those extensions will be preloaded for you you can also use um, you can also use xdebug over here i'm going to uh, let it run for quick few minutes so this patch file is getting applied and and should be ready very shortly in the meantime we can see the ports directory uh, ports uh, window here you will see all the uh, all the ports that are that are being used this one is particularly for the website you can preview the website or you can open it in the browser you can also make this public and share share this entire uh, project with someone else for example if i'm if i'm stuck with some issue which i'm not able to resolve and i want to share this code with someone so one of my uh, teammates i can do that by just uh, clicking on this button and and this url can be can then be shared any code changes also get like applied immediately and then you can um, troubleshoot it so i think it should be ready now so i am going to access the website preview and see if i see uh, the site yes so the site is up here uh, let me open it in a new tab and show you guys this makes use of the dev and yeah this makes use of the dev in the background and drupal pod is free for um it 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 provides 50 hours of um, 
free uh, 50 hours free and and if you are a group, if you are a contributor you can get an unlimited access to this uh, service so i generally use this for troubleshooting uh, i can use ddev uh, in order to enable uh, in order to enable xdebug you just need to have add this command ddev xdebug and um, Go here and and listen to X debug. That should start uh, debugging for you. And as usual, we can just go to the web directory and wherever we want, we can add uh, the breakpoints. So this is how I generally troubleshoot with um, Git pod. Um, general instructions have been provided on this particular page. So um, how how like. So the, these are the instructions. So if you can, if you want to take, do it, if you're using it for the first time, this, this can be really helpful. So this was about uh, Git pod. So next up, I'm going to talk about um, another repository that I use. So Drupal contributions repository is if I need to review, I if I need to review an issue, I generally use Git pod. But if I if I need to work on an issue, if I have to create a patch, I generally use this repository called like Drupal contributions. So this is a repository which allows us to also quickly switch between versions. Okay. It has following functions. Uh, it allows us to run PHP unit test cases. It uh, allows us to like reinstall a site. It it you can quickly um, use a patch. You can revert a patch. You can run all the code checks. These these are the ones which uh, are run by Drupal.org when you submit a patch. So for example, this custom command failed. So if you run uh, if you run a Lando code check it's going to identify all the issues for you and it also allows you to create a patch so this is how it looks it has a config dot it has a config file wherein you can set the drupal branch you want for example 10.1.x and after that you need to run the command line to rebuild so once you run this uh, environment will will be set up for you and you can use this. Um, one more important command that I generally use is Lando patch. And the patch um, URL. And any Drupal.org patch you can directly apply here. This this can be very helpful. Also, PHP. Yeah, it tells you. Yeah, it gives you details regarding the patch whether it's applied and what are the files that were changed, et cetera, et cetera. So yeah, this also is a very helpful tool. Apart from this, I also use DR editor. Um, and so moving on to the next topic that is reviewing an RTBC. So what do we, how do we review and how do we RTBC? So I'm going to talk about it and like in short and these are the questions that we really need to ask ourselves when when we move a issue to RTBC or when we re review. Are are there reasons to make not make this change? Can it be done in contrib? Is this is the scope correct? Is it an allowed change? Is it significant change? Is it experimental? So all this needs to be like a review needs to be very significant and. Um, one more thing that we what generally mention while doing RTBC is first is whether the title is accurate and clear of the issue. Second, issue summary. Issue summary needs to be clear. It should be. Uh, it should have steps to reproduce. If any of these are not there, uh, we we generally don't mark this ticket as RTBC. We we ask for these changes to be made. 
second third thing is um, has the before and after screenshots been embedded in in the in the summary then we check the metadata uh, whether the project is correct whether the version is correct whether status is correct etc uh, etc et uh, next thing if we have any parent issue we, we need to check we need to add that we also need to add related issues if applicable then we only need to display screenshots and relevant files for example if you see um, this particular issue there are unused files over here so uh, this, these are not required so we we need to hide it right hey richard and finally yeah, code review whether the patch applies correctly whether coding standards have been tested the documentation is clear i'm going to um, show an example of a uh, issue uh, rtbc issue uh, which has been tested and this this gives a very like clear thing like on how it has been tested whether the patch applies correctly it it has pro, like it, uh, it has screenshots of how the module was installed configure form etc um it also tells uh, it also tells that upgrade status was checked uh it we have checked for any database issue db logs in like issues or warnings there were no issues or warnings in the db log and code review was done only when all of this is done we move a issue to rtbc so yeah mostly uh, that was mostly it from my side if you have any questions like i i can i'm open for it yeah hi i'm may um i saw that I've, i've seen i haven't been contributing to drupal for a long time and i know that they've moved to gitlab and they yeah. the new issues that i see have pull requests instead of patches but i see still there's a lot of issues that um have old patches like dot patch files included um has there been any official uh decision to start moving those patches into prs instead or are we currently working with both prs and patches currently we are working with both prs and patches but it is like uh, prs are are a preferred method uh but i find it sometimes slightly difficult because someone creates a pr against the base branch and and the issue um, version changes i mean the component version changes so we have to rebase and do a lot of stuff but yeah there's of there's no official method for it so currently pr as well as patches are um, both are okay both are good Uh, I would like to add to that. Um, sometimes the integration with GitLab and Drupal gets broken, yeah. Uh, and sometimes you try to create the PR branch, but nothing happens. So I fall back to creating a patch in any case. Right, and, the, and there are, are there still conventions on the patch naming that uh, you know trigger the bots for the automated tests and things like that, or um, or any name will do because usually we used to, to to do the the issue number and then the dash and then the comment number and dot patch whatever it was it is has that changed like do we have a different convention we have a uh, it doesn't trigger the review as such but the general convention is issue name hyphen uh, the comment oh. id uh, i mean comment number Uh, i have also seen another um, convention that is description of the issue then issue number and then uh, the comment but generally i prefer using uh, just a simple one uh, this is like this uh, naming standard doesn't trigger a test once you move once you once you create once you add a patch and move the issue to needs review only then 
a test is triggered. Dot patch would generally trigger a test. Also, we generally provide diff, so inter diffs, which like uh, for example, let me see if I if there is an inter diff here. Ch changes and between then, previous parts and current one. Yeah. Yes. So any any changes between uh, version is is generally provided. So this helps in reviewing the patch. It makes it makes it lost not easier. Okay, and and uh, current so so the the trigger to start the the bot tests basically is to move the the yes. to needs review right. And right. I haven't, as I said, I haven't looked at this, but it used to be multiple versions of PHP that was checked against. Is it only the recent, the most recent now? No, it you it depends upon you when you upload a patch. I think I'm logged out, but let me see if I can. When you upload a patch, you could um, specify specify the uh, what you want to test, and you could also say if you want to test it or not. Oh, okay, uh, okay. Right. Also, you could append the words "do not test" to the patch name, uh, and and last the last set of text. Just put "do not text" and all "do not test" in all caps. So if you don't want that particular patch to be not tested, okay. When you upload a patch, you can specify the version here. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Oh, cool, thanks. So maybe I just was curious, I didn't do a patch, like I, I upload a patch, but I didn't do the whole workflow before. So my question is, uh, do you know where the figure come from? Like uh, as uh, though, like for each patch, we can see like uh, it had been testing in specific version and then how many has been passed. So that figure, do you know where it's come from? Like uh, it's just test by different size or it's by like a different yeah so do you know where that figure comes from like uh, how yeah yes so firstly you specify the version you want to test and there's a drupal ci which uh which which does this testing it's automated uh, uh ci which will run all the tests and uh we have tests in i mean uh, php unit tests and it'll uh, it'll let you know if there are any issues it, it also runs PHP CS and uh, yeah, oh. um, ESLint also it runs. So these are the things. If you use this repository, the one which I mentioned earlier, just a moment, it lets you, it lets you uh, run all those commands. You can run Lando core check and PHP unit. So these are going to <clears throat> these are going to run all the tests which are there in CI. I mean, I mean the Drupal CI and yeah. your patch won't fail after that. <clears throat> Sorry. Cool. So could I, uh, uh, to be honest, I didn't use Lando before. So do you reckon, but I heard it's a lot like a to Docker solution. Uh, do you reckon this may be the Lando is the best uh, or most popular Docker solution for like a Drupal hosting now? And also maybe it's also widely used in for patching workflow. Yes, Lando as well as DDEV. Uh, DDEV is I think a preferred, uh, yeah, cool. yeah. Um, preferred one. Because cool. like I, I read a lot of documentation on Drupal.org which specifies detail. <clears throat> oh, thanks. Hmm. Yeah, I would check. In terms of development tools. Yes. Yeah. There's a there's a development tools page. So this specifies DDEV and Lando. It also specifies Git pod. Git pod, yeah, good. Thanks, man. Yeah, that's great. So, in order to use Git pod, do we need DDEV environment setup, or like when we set up Git pod, DDEV will automatically, like obviously, DDEV will automatically run. But if you want to run Git pod on your local machine, then you need to install DDEV locally. Okay, I'm <clears throat> using DDEV for my local environment. Okay. Yeah, so I can try Drupal for it's really uh, the feature yes. which is like switching between version that's really helpful. Yeah, it has helped me a lot. And I, I heard a lot of people use um, 
Drupal pod to <clears throat> make changes and showcase it to the client as well. So I'm not, I haven't explored that aspect of it, yeah. but I think that's a very helpful uh, tool. Can we change the PHP version by Drupal pod yes, as well? Yes, you, okay. you can. You can do it in the dot uh, Drupal pod dot yaml file. Right, thanks. You can additionally run this local on local, and these are the commands. I haven't really used it that way because I prefer using Lando contributions, this repository, to pull contribution repository. Right. Uh, sorry, one more question. So about uh, for patching or like a create merge request, uh, is there any like a code coverage requirement from Drupal or, or from the country module or mainly a decision by the developer uh, for the patch or the merge request we edit or submit it? Like uh, as you said, we need to run the Lando P3 unit. So for unit testing, is there any certain role like the code, new edit code must be 80% covered or any roles like that? No, any developer, any anyone who has an account on Drupal.org can submit a patch. Okay, and you don't need a specific rule for that. Um, cool. For nice. for for merge request, or if you want to um, create, a, or if you want to work on a merge request, I'm going to sh I'll quickly show how that works as well. Cool, thanks. So if if a merge request is already present, and if you want to work on a, on that merge request, so. Let me show how that works. I think this is the one. You go here and you, if once you're logged in, you will have this button. You, you have to ask for, oh, yeah. there's a problem. But yeah, generally, if I if I click on this get push access, it, it gives me access to uh, this MR. And I can then pull and also uh, push this merge request. Yeah, I think thanks. Does that so, yeah. does that work as a sort of like is it a, a collaborative um, way of having multiple people contributing to the same? Okay. Yes, exactly. So this is a merge request created by someone else, and I have access to it now. Uh, but first, you need to like click on that get push access button. And once you once you have done that, you can easily push and also uh, like there's a way to change this like version as well. So this pull request, I think um, it has a specific uh, version, so you can also change that. And if the if the issue remains open long enough and, and the uh, fork becomes outdated, who who is responsible for rebasing? Uh, is it the original person? Do you? Um, generally, anyone can rebase it who okay. has push access. Okay. So it shouldn't, shouldn't be a problem. Okay. Yeah, mostly that's. That's it from my side. Any any other questions? Um, thank you. I have a question, but maybe not related to this. Uh, so I see I can see the Lando is a free like open source tool built based on Docker, and uh, I think Docker Desktop has a license. Like if it's used by like a company, it's, it's not free. We need to pay for that. So is there a similar limitation in Lando or like it's actually it's, as long as it's free, we can just use it straight away. So any license issue with uh, in that side do we need to pay for anything i don't think so um, don't actually think actually there is there is an issue is with okay. queue. so did they started uh, an issue and i think they already support i can't remember the name of the uh, uh, product but i'm looking in github to find the the name and i'll put it in a, a link so it's okay. a, a sort of like a more open version of docker basically uh awesome. and did they already supports it I think, but Lando has a, an open issue to include support for it, but not yet. So uh, in theory, everyone that is using Docker for for uh, commercial use and not personal use on their computers should have a license. Uh, mm -hmm. But 
if you're asking if people are doing it, yeah, then. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. Yeah, that's the issue. I think I was, uh, I have like, I was totally, I can't use Docker for the, yeah, for commercial use. So I need to, yeah, figure out something else. Thanks, man. If you could share the link, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find it now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The workaround I had is I just uh, use a virtual box and get similar tasks down in as a Docker desktop. Just use Docker Compose and manage everything in the Linux uh, virtual box. But uh, it's very, very. It's not really a good solution. Like it requires more resource and uh, somehow in syncing files and uh, resource. Uh, it's yeah. It's fairly buggy solution. Not so required. yeah. The the, the software that is alternative, uh, there's actually two, uh, uh, Rancher Desktop and Colima. So DDEV, I think, already supports Colima. This is the, the issue in the Lando queue. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure if, um, I, I can't remember, I haven't bookmarked or uh, studied the respective issue for uh, DDEV, um, but I guess you got, and I'll try to find like Colima. That's why I think this is a great plus for, place for me to start with. Yeah, it's really helpful. Nice. Yeah, and this is the link for others as well for Kalima, which is the uh, sort of like open source alternative of uh, uh, Docker. Awesome. Thanks. And there's me plus running it since, since past May. So that's why I know that's Clonus meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that break. I was in the red. Yeah, I use Lando heavily as well with my contributions mm -hmm. to Backdrop CMS. Um, uh, and I have my own scripts that spin up uh, D10, 7, 8, whatever versions. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping to open source that at some point. Um, awesome. but, but yeah, it has come up multiple times because there's some people that are very cautious with, uh, uh, software that are doing, uh, things in a, I don't know, perceivably unethical manner or, you know, not entirely open source. So, yeah. Um, well, right. any other questions? Yep. Any more questions? No, no question, but just out of curiosity, I'm uh, uh, working on one feature, which is multiple taxonomy filter as a filter. Sorry, that's not relevant and to the presentation. I might just stop the recording. <laughs>